Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Dutchy Tech Discussion Podcast, where we have an opinionated discussion about technology topics. Today, we'll be talking about our thoughts on the NVIDIA RTX 50 series, new graphics cards that will be coming out this year in 2025. But first, if you enjoy this podcast or any of our other videos that we produce, you can support us by becoming a supporter on Patreon. By becoming a supporter on Patreon, you get early access to our podcast, like one week early access before it goes live, and other bonus content and features depending on which tier you have selected. But other than that, let's get back to the topic on hand on our thoughts on NVIDIA RTX 50 series graphics card. Now, just letting you know that I will be getting a new RTX 50 series graphics card laptop this year. And the reason why is you can thank Microsoft who are ending support for Windows 10 in October 2025 this year which you probably know my thoughts on this already if you heard me mention them before that I think this whole upgrading process from Windows 10 to 11 is a load of rubbish because of this compatibility support I think it's just 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 because Microsoft said so that's just my hunch or just my assumption because I don't think there'll be any difference between the Windows 10 and 11 kernel. But let's put that aside. Now I have two options for a new laptop. I can get a new laptop now. But the laptop I have now is actually over eight years old. Which has been pretty good. Which has a NVIDIA GeForce G a GTX 970 graphics card in it. And I have tried playing City Skylines 2 on it, on low settings, it was doable, but in the end it was actually because the game was just crap. I should have just gone back to City Skylines 1. Now, Hogwarts Legacy on the other hand, that's a game I would like to try, I was not going to even attempt to buy and try this on this graphics card, because I don't think the GX... 970 is actually going to support that or like even get good even with the latest drivers I don't think I'm going to get the game to run potentially because the graphics are a bit high, uh, high a bit out there than what City Skylines 2 but I have two options I can get a laptop now or I can wait later for the new Dell Alienware Area 51 laptops, they're going to be two variants, obviously the 16 and the 18 inch, which I'm leaning to the 18 inch uh, screen sizes, which was introduced in CS uh, this year for their laptop lineup. But let's have a look at the, the first option if I want to get a laptop now through Dell, the, which is an Alienware M18 R2 gaming laptop and when you select something from their website and I need to warn you that when they say customize that is misleading and what I mean by that is that when you select customize you should be able to customize your configuration for that laptop this is not the case and I'll explain why so with this laptop M18 R2 gaming laptop from Dell, Alienware of course, gives you two, well from, from New Zealand, gives you two CPU options, a Core i7 or a Core i9, all from the 14th gen, so that's pretty oldish, I think. You can select the operating system from Windows 11 and 11 Home and Pro. Now, if you do select the i7, you are locked in to the graphics card of a GeForce RTX 4060 with 8 gigabytes of video memory, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and one terabyte M.2. 
when you switch to the 9 Core i9. Then you get locked in to the GeForce RTX 4019 16 gigabytes of video memory and 64 gigabytes of RAM and 2 terabytes N.2. Now I kind of understand when you're switching CPUs and graphics cards yeah, I kind of understand where uh, you might have to make a change or sacrifice. But with RAM, shouldn't be the case. If you want 16 or 32 or 64 gigabytes, you're not forced to a particular memory configuration that's for you. So... If I want 16 gigabytes, I'm going to have to sacrifice everything else. If I want a 1 terabyte M.2, I have to sacrifice everything else. And if I want a second drive, for Pete's sake, they're not giving you an extra option for that. Because when I bought this original laptop back in 2016, I was able to do that. So this tells me that no, there is no customization, DAL, if you're listening. It's more like pre-configured builds. So that gets me worried about the Alienware Area 51 next lineup because it's probably going to be the same thing. And I'm not happy about that. Because they might give me 32 gigabytes and that's all I'm going to get. And then, oh, hang on. I want 64 gigabytes. Oh, they don't have that. Oh, they don't have this, this space. Oh, they're not going to give me a second drive to put in. I have to buy it myself and put it in myself. Which maybe probably violates their warranty. Which I don't want to do. To violate the warranty if something goes wrong. Which is just ridiculous, in my opinion. So, Dell, go back. And it must be a cost-saving thing. Because these must be pre-built configurations. RAM is easy to change. SSD is easy to change. Graphics cards, not so much. I, I understand. But come on. It's just ridiculous. So now let's get to the actual crux of the graphics cards. Now they're going to be, we're looking at the specs. Okay. They're going to be four graphics cards that probably already released in January this year or already released now. And they may be being sold out because, you know, those crypto miners, and I just don't understand what makes it appeal that what these cards are so, makes CPUs so inferior to crypto miners. I just don't understand why. But anyhow, you're going to get uh, four types of versions of cards. The 5070 and its TI edition. The 5080 um, and the 5090. Now, here's a little bit of uh, what I've noticed. This is the desktop card, okay? The base clock speed is slower on a 5090 compared to a 5080. That just doesn't seem right to me. The boost clock speed is actually higher on a 5080 than a 5090 by 200 megahertz. Now, if I compare that with a 40 series card, I would understand uh, from a 4090 and a 4080. Yes, so that is... Okay, the speeds are quite the same, all right? But when you compare a 4090 and a 5090, the 4090 is faster in base clock speed and boost clock speed. Not by, if you count by, but then I grew up in the 90s. Things were a lot simpler when you're buying games. It's either you have the megahertz or you're above the megahertz or you're below the megahertz, and then the game won't run, or might run, but it'll be slow, slow as hell. 
Then the 2000s came, it's all about the gigahertz. Then you had the RAM, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256 um, megabytes of RAM. Then you had the video memory, well known as video cards back then. Oh, you only need 8 megabytes of video memory. Oh, that's sweet as. Um, and then you had, you had, sometimes they throw shader 2.0 support, which I didn't know what the time is. And then you need OpenGL Open or DirectX to go with it, I think, uh, with certain games. No biggie. Because it's just a soft, it's just a piece of software. One's Microsoft, one's in probably open source, I think. OpenGL, yeah, I think one's open source. One's Microsoft's proprietary open source. So, fifty seventy and fifty seventy Ti, no brainer. Ti, if you want to afford it. Now, these are rumored leak prices, which are. Let me just go and find them again. So for the desktop, you'd be paying roughly about 550 US for a 5070. Obviously, TI is going to be a bit more expensive for the 5070, so you'll be paying 750 US. And about a 5080 is about 1,000, and then a 5090 is about 2 grand US. Now, apparently compared to if these rumored prices are correct, or leaked prices are correct, Compared to the 4090 with the 5090, there's about a $400 difference in US, which is a big price increase, which is raising eyebrow. It's raising eyebrows, and um, but further down the stack, uh, the prices are not actually that bad. So those are desktop cards, but I'm actually looking for a laptop card. Now, as I said before about Dell, they have pre-configured laptops. Now, I actually have seen, now, I actually seen that Asus actually are selling the 5090 lineup already. And I haven't seen Dell with the, the latest series of laptops. But if you want an RTX 5090, you get 200, sorry, 24 gigabytes of GDDR7 video RAM which is a big improvement from 16 gigabytes with the 4090. Uh, the 4080 is about 16, and a, and a 4070 is about 8 gigabytes, give or take. But for Apples, for Apples, the laptop range is going to be a lot slower in specs. Now, I'll just refresh the page. Let's see if... They updated it, 50 series, nope, they have not updated. So, what has happened is, I could not find any base or clock uh, boost clock speeds for these cars. So I don't know, the, the full specs are quite lower. Um, so, if I went with a 4090, it will roughly be about 1.4 gigahertz base. I'm thinking if I'm reading this chart right, to 2 gigahertz uh, boost clock speed. And it only consumes about 80 to 150 watt max power draw. And you only maximize to roughly about 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 for the 49 series. So there's a new set of generation of uh, graphics cards. Uh, well, memory, memory, uh, what's, what's the words? Uh, memory, graphic card memory generation because the 30 series was also using GDDR6 as well. And then you got the typical uh, ray tracing cores. The, the I think I'm hoping I'm pronouncing this tensor cores. The uh, and there's also there probably is some other stuff in there as well. But what makes uh, the Nvidia st 
standout in performance is the DLSS 3. While DSL, the, the, the new version of DLSS is DLSS 4 for the uh, fifth generation of the card, the 50 series card. And apparently there's some big performance boosts because of that. Now, if it doesn't, your game doesn't support that, then you're not gaining anything. Instead of single frame generation, it's actually multi frame generation. Not to mention it will have NVIDIA Reflex, which will help reduce um, your millisecond frame rate, I believe, which is probably critical for like shooting uh, shooting games. Um, it's until I know what the speed uh, spec speeds of um, the spec speeds because I'll be locked into a card and then I don't know if I'm going to get any better performance out of because laptop is going to be slower slower performance but it's probably going to have a lot more performance what I have now which is a 970M GTX but I would like to know, because there's a lot of hype about this, and they are really emphasizing on AI to p p produce, boost FPS performance, reduce latency, improve image quality, and a whole bunch of other things like ray tracing, um, super resolution, um, and uh, obviously, um, there, I bet there's probably a lot more features to get more kick uh, out of your card. So, I would like to know what your thoughts on if money's not an ob, ob uh, if money's not a uh, the objective, and if you had to choose a card. Out of the 50 series, explain why you got that cards, what's the reason, or what game, or what application you require to have that card, and because I really want to know what your thoughts are on it, because then everybody else knows, like, oh, is that a good card, is that a bad card, or um, or even just tell me what, uh, let us know what, uh, what 40 series card and what is better or not. So let us know in the comments and I look forward to reading them and possibly replying to them. And uh, until the next podcasts, I'm just going to wait. I'm going to wait and see what comes out of this and then make my choice and then until the next podcast i will see you then